All right, Casey, we've gotten big into the food piece. We've covered toxicants. Let's move into some of these other high-level areas that we want to make sure we're looking at and addressing when it comes to metabolic health. Yeah, well, I think one of, I mean, so there's 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 so many here. There's the movement, there's the sleep, there's the emotional health, there's temperature, there's light. I think if there's, you know, there's one that I think that I would say feels really accessible and very high leverage. It's it's the movement piece. And I think one of the things that surprised me in doing the research for this book was actually the power of reframing movement from the concept of exercise to the concept of, you know, kind of just creating a life that's in motion. So right now we're very much subscribed to this idea that like exercise is a thing that we have on our to-do list. We schedule it into our calendar and we check it off and great, like we've done it. And that's kind of, I think the mindset and, and even with that less than 28% of Americans are getting the recommended amount of exercise per week that we're supposed to. But there's actually, I think an issue with that perspective, which is that it, it solidifies in our head that exercise is a discrete bout of activity that we, that we do. And then we're done. When you actually look at the biology of, you know, human life, our cells actually do their best work when the body is kind of in motion, like all throughout the day. Like we, you look at tribal cultures that are still living today, that living very indigenous, sort of more traditional life. Some of them are walking 20,000 steps a day. The average American's walking 3,500 steps per day. We are really not moving. And something really astonishing is that we spend about 80% of our waking time just sitting, just not moving. And that has a profound impact on how our cells are functioning because every time we actually contract our muscles, even if it's just like very low grade movement, walking through the house, walking around the house, walking in the garden, we're actually pushing glucose channels to the cell membrane. Muscle contraction does that. It pushes glucose channels to the cell membrane and keeps them there absent of an insulin signal. So we're able to actually take glucose out of the bloodstream and use it and process it. But most of us are sitting 80% of the day, and then maybe we do the exercise at the end of the day or the beginning of the day. But the rest of the day, we're not giving the cells the signal to keep the glucose channels of the membrane. So we're, we're creating this very stagnant biology that could be ameliorated just by low-grade movement. You and I both right now are standing at our standing desk during this conversation, which activates core muscles, leg muscles, you know, our glutes. So there is activity happening just by keeping ourselves upright that would not be happening if we're sitting in a chair. So I think it's actually a really hopeful message because a lot of our health could get a lot better if we actually just maybe took, I think we should, we should all be exercising hundred percent, but foundationally we should all be moving a lot more throughout the day with simple, easy, low grade activity. Um, and trying to at least move a few times an hour, get up out of our chairs so that we can constitutively keep these glucose channels at the cell membrane to be able to let glucose into the cell to be processed by the mitochondria. Um, the research has shown that there was actually a huge study in JAMA, one of the premier medical journals, that showed that just getting 7,000 steps per day, not even 10,000, just 7,000 steps per day, had a the, the people who did that compared to fewer than 7,000 steps per day had 50 to 70% lower risk of dying in the 11 year follow up period that they followed these people compared to the people who got less. So, literally, just walking 7,000 steps a day slashed your risk of dying from all cause mortality by 50 to 70%. And there's been follow up studies that basically show slightly different results, but like looking at people who got between eight and 12,000 steps per day, that those people had again, around a 50 to 65% lower risk of dying in the follow-up period than people who didn't get that amount. And then other studies have shown 40% lower Alzheimer's dementia risk, you know, 40 to 60% lower risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes, lower risk of depression, gastric reflux, cancer. It's astounding. And I think it's, it just goes to show like it doesn't need to be complicated. Like if you, if, if this were a pill that lowered mortality by 50 to 75%, this would be front page news, but we, we have that it's literally just walking. So we should absolutely be getting the resistance training. We should be getting our heart rate up, but at a baseline, we should just try to find ways to take some of our seated activities that we're doing normally 
and, and try and do them either standing or moving and ideally outdoors. So an invitation I have for people is to just like really sit down and think about like, how do I spend my days? Maybe I'm cooking. I'm with my kids. I'm with my partner. I'm going to the grocery. I mean, I'm getting groceries. I'm working. How can you take uh, opening mail, you know, whatever it is, paying bills. How can I take some of those activities that I'm currently doing indoors and sitting and make them outdoors and standing or moving? So catching up with a partner instead of sitting on the couch doing it, throw a football in the backyard or walk to the park. If it's opening mail, don't do it at your desk. Take it outside to a table and try and do it standing if you can. If you have meetings at work, see if people want to do a walking meeting outdoors. Um, If you normally have Zoom calls, see if you can do it without video and take a walk while you're on the Zoom call. Get a treadmill desk on Amazon for $120. I'm sorry, the, a, tre- a walking pad under your desk. They're now literally $120 to $150. You can easily get 10,000 steps in two to three hours walking at a super slow pace on the treadmill under your desk. Um, you know, right now, a lot of us are buying our grocery store, our groceries on, you know, Instacart or websites. We're not even getting out of our chair to buy our groceries. You know, 150 years ago, most of us were growing our own vegetables. Then we moved to, you know, farmer's markets and and sort of outdoor markets. Then we moved to indoor grocery stores. Now we just do it from our offices. So we've gotten, we've made it as sedentary as humanly possible. So, so think about maybe making that a task. Like, you know, don't buy all your groceries online. Commit to going to the farmer's market once every two weeks if you can outdoors and moving. So yeah, it's just really taking honest stock of those things and, and, and trying to make them a little bit more mobile because it's not, um, there's not just lip service. It literally changes our cellular biology in a really positive way. And it's, it's easy and simple. You mentioned the walking pad there. I ended up investing in one of these about four months ago and I rave about it all the time. It's been such a game changer. And of course, someone like me, who's doing what I do and spending a lot of time on the computer, it makes sense. It would be impactful. But for anybody who is working in an office space, like it has been seriously such a game changer for me. And, and, and I love it. Yeah. There's a stat in the book that is astonishing and I'm unfortunately don't have it right in front of me, but they basically took people, 10 people in a workplace environment and they had them use an under desk treadmill for, I think it was just two and a half hours per day for maybe two weeks. And the people lost 2.5 2.5 pounds of fat and gained like 2.5 pounds of lean tissue. So muscle basically during like a two week period. And so they didn't actually change their weight, but they changed their body composition. And this was just a couple hours at a low speed during the work day. So the paper extrapolated, and this has not been shown in the research, but they extrapolated that using a treadmill desk for a couple hours a day for a year could result in a 40 to 60 pound weight loss. And I just, you know, I, that is very much like, you know, would it increase people's hunger? Like we, we don't know that for sure, but that was what their calculations they extrapolated to. So I think it's super valuable. And I'm like you, I'm, I'm, I'm always talking about my, my walking pad and how much I love it. Cause when I don't use it, I often, you know, it's really hard to get those 10,000 steps. And when I do use it, it, it's like effortless. It just happens. And in a way, it does kind of seem silly that we're talking about walking pads and like gamifying our steps. But the world is so radical we live in. Like, look at us here. We're connected from different parts of, you know, two different countries. And and you mentioned Instacart. Like, everything has radically changed in such a period of time that in this radical world, sometimes you need to do radical things like that to counterbalance. So I say embrace it. Yeah. And it's like, it's not about like going back to the agrarian society where 90% of Americans were working in agriculture, which is like the way it was in the early 1800s. Like the vast majority of people lived on a farm and now less than 1% of Americans live on a farm. So it's like, that's probably not changing. But what we can change is sort of like to build back into our lives what modernity took away and do it in a way that also allows us to do the work that we need to do um, by just like modulating our environment through the lens of what do my cells actually need? My cells need movement. They literally need movement. So how do I have my desk job while also giving my cells movement? And that is the responsibility we have to do. So step one is understanding what do our cells need? What do our mitochondria need? And then step two is in this modern world that I'm living in, how do I do that for them? Um, 
and that's the journey and it can be really fun, you know, and it's, it's not about creating a whole new lifestyle. It's about simple tweaks that give ourselves what they're, what they need and, and stop them from being so overburdened. If you enjoyed that clip, you're going to want to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. Everyone needs to care about this because metabolism and metabolic health, it is the core foundational layer that all health is built upon. That is the biggest blind spot in Western.